Welcome back everyone, my name is Altamar and we are going to be continuing our let's play of Tower of Time. Where we left last time, we were about to do a fight but I went to go redo her gear. Look at her TPS now. So I realized we can not get more than 50 in a stat. If you get more than 50 that's pointless. So what we might have to do is redo some of our people so that we're not wasting stats. Like his is 44, 41, perfectly fine, no big deal. Uh, hers is exactly 50 and then exactly 50. That's fine. Um, actually, your speed might be a little more than 50. I'll take a look at that. See if we can drop some points from that and put it into other abilities. And she's at 4232, so that's perfectly okay as well. But I think hers is over 50 by a lot on mastery. We could be putting points to things like speed or even might. But anyways, her DPS is now almost 190 damage per second, which is very impressive. So hopefully she'll be doing tons and tons of damage. We got some new guns with her. We'll take a look as we do this fight. Dark Sentinels, Abominations, and Painbringers. The big person we have to look at though is going to be Whisper because hers I think is massively over 50. We're actually at a bit of a disadvantage because of that. Her damage is 795 damage a shot. Holy crap. I think Maeve is probably going to be our highest damage dealer now. I really don't pay too much attention to Maeve now. Her guns just do all the talking for her. much damage against no oh, they still do a ton of damage never mind I lied Kane is still also just an unkillable thorns robot all right let's take a look at Maeve's ZVS on that fight it's up to 307 now that is kind of insane it's a lot of damage all right moving on Oh, the last electronic panel. So I've been—I was figuring out how to do this, and I figured it out. I did all the other panels, I think, correctly. Yes. So each of them have an element assigned to them. This one's Earth. You can tell by by the uh, green crystals that are poking from its things. So if you move it to the green crystal, that's fine. The other ones were uh, this one here. No, where is it? This one here is water, so you should just uh, move it towards the dark blue crystal. This one here was air, it was the light blue crystal, and this one was fire. And we have to go back to fire anyways, because that's apparently where that uh, portal opened up. But... There's a life oak. Your champion stop mid-stride as the hero shout from Eric. Weapons raised, they look around, observing the shadows around them. After a moment, they turn towards the druid. Strong Eric, do you sense anything? Eric points ahead, his hands shaking and his eyes wide open. Life Oak Seed, I found it. Looks like an item. The sound of trickling water and the smells of fresh air and damp earth grab your attention. Though they arrive potent and vibrant, you realize only the druid's sentence delivered them. Without a word to the others, Eric moves to the nearby wall and sweeps his hand above the stones. Another sensation of warmth radiating from an unseen source rushes across your hand. What'd you find, Horns? There's something beyond this wall. You have a good eye, Sir Druid. This masterful deception is no doubt dwarven in nature. Pushing on a few of the stones, Rekam forces the wall back, a loud clang rings out, followed by the rattling of chains as the wall slowly slides away. Intense heat from a handful of red rocks embedded in the walls, ceilings, and floor force everyone to shield their faces and step back. Everyone save Eric, who steps forward into a small nook-like chamber as if mesmerized. The elf's hair blows wildly as he enters the nook, moving towards a mound of stone and earth protruding from the back wall. A single stream of clear water trickles down the wall, 
across the earthen protrusion forming a pool around a fist-sized cream-colored crystal. The mineral is clouded over in time and lies speckled in moss-like growths. I've never seen a crystal like that. There are few who have. Do you recognize it, Elder? Is it valuable? Unless my eyes deceive me, it's truly priceless. Priceless. Eric raises his, raises his iron rod and with a quick, quick, slight, bleh, quick swipe lashes out, shattering the crystal to pieces. As the others look on in surprising concern, Eric reaches down and extracts a large acorn-like nut. The elf's eyes well up with tears. A life oak seed can see its life spark energy from the natural world of the first age. It is, it is indescribable. The single seed will return life to the endless forest and give my people a second chance, despite the invader's plans for Artara. Whisper floats past the others, coming to rest before the druid. As she gazes at the seed, her eyes glow brightly. This cannot be. Who is it, your highness? I have witnessed firsthand a relic of celestial night, an item crafted from the very energy which gave the world form. My people know of no greater source of power, yet this simple seed rivals its power, or perhaps contains even more. Whisper reaches for the seed, causing Eric to recoil with narrowed eyes. Give it to me. I will forge its energy into an item of unsurpassed power. The bottom of the tower will not evade us with such an item in our possession. Stay back, have you heard nothing I've said in all the time we've been together? This is the very reason I came to this place. It and it alone is the salvation of my people. Don't be a fool, what good is it if we never see the surface again? The power of this seed is a gift, a gift we must open and make use of right now while we still have a chance. Do not mistake my passion for selfishness. The item of its making need not be mine. I will craft it for any one of us, as the group sees fit. But this is an opportunity you must not waste. Eric's hand tightens around his weapon. For the first time you feel one of your champions actively resist your bond. The Druid's will is so resolute your connection weakens with each passing moment. This may very well be the last life oak seed in existence. Its power is not to be squandered in the creation of an item of men, no matter how powerful or useful it might be. Eric mumbles under his breath, and Elvish causing the seed to take on a green luminescence. The glow slowly spreads across the druid's entire body and down onto the floor, where it spills into a dozen distinct lines. As each line travels towards the walls, a small green shoot rises up from the floor. The shoots sprout and grow with unnatural speed. In moments, the entire nook is covered in lush greenery and unrecognizable exotic blooms. Your champions stand in awe before the natural power of the seed, all except one. Such narrow-sightedness. You would keep such power for yourself, presumed to decide the fate of all, just as your ancestors did when they broke the treaty and used magic to defend Lothrian. Eric's eyes boil with rage at the mystic's word, but as the truth cuts deep into the druid, he drops his eyes in shame. The very fate of elvenkind rests on my shoulders. My people will live or die by the seed, I cannot fail them. You are failing all of us by keeping it, druid. Enough, your highness. The druid came, this to er, came to this tower, seeking the very thing he now holds. It is his to do as he wishes, and there's nothing more to be said on the matter. Now let's move on. As Cain moves away and the others turn to follow, Whisper shakes her head with disgust. Lost in thought, Eric seems or remains motionless, contemplating the mystic's words with a heavy heart. Looking at the small green shoot, he watches as a small chrysalis appears, grows and hatches, releasing a brilliant colored butterfly right in front of his eyes. Life always finds a way. You're right, mystic. It is not for me or any other elf to decide the fate of Artara. Your champions stop to look back at the druid. We elves have carried the burden of my people's self-centered decision for far too long. It's time we absolved ourselves of that wrong. This seed is the single greatest hope for elvenkind, but if you believe it will better serve all of Artara by any other means, so be it. Take it and do as you wish, with elven blessings. All of your champions, even Whisper herself, stand before the druid in shock and surprise. In truth, each champion recognizes value in either Eric or Whisper possessing the seed. Their indecision is so strong, the mere notion of your desire will sway their decision. Whisper. You will not rob Eric of his selfless act or his people's chance to cleanse their karma of an ancient wrong. The seed goes to Whisper. Surprisingly gracious of you, Eric. Whisper sticks the seed with an intense wide-eyed look on her face. Bear or Boron places his hand on the druid's shoulders. I do not believe your people will live or die by a single tree, no matter how powerful. There will be another way, you will see. The balance has truly turned in our favor. Now, what item shall I forge with such unimaginable power? Well, it looks like you did it. It's a lot of skill power increase, and a lot of crit damage, and a lot of hit points. It's actually a really nice staff, and it's, in ch it's uh, reforgeable. I'm going to give it to Whisper. Because I just think we have too much mastery. So let's, let's remove this 8 mastery staff and see what happens. We're still above 50, so even without the Aid Mastery Staff, we're way above 50, which is not a great sign for our stat itemization. We can just upgrade the skill power to 25%. It's good, 180%. Do we have other items we can give her that would sort of turn the balance a little bit here?
We might actually have to make her some items. Let's see how much extra mastery she has. It's probably going to be a lot. Okay, so she's at 50 right now. If we knock off another 5... 48. Okay, so she's only over by 3. That's not as bad as I assumed. So without her staff, she's actually pretty close to the normal cap. I'm okay with that. Cool staff. Alrighty, enchant scroll coming up. Elemental Aura, level 3, and the teleporter. This is what I was looking for, because I want to just teleport back to where the fire thing is. Without having a long, long walk. Every so often I have to turn back and rotate my mouse on my uh, work keyboard just to make sure it doesn't go into inactive mode. But my work doesn't start till 12 today because that's when my hearing is. So yeah, gotta wait it out. And besides, it's New Year's Eve, or not New Year's Eve, it's Christmas Eve. I'm not doing it very much today, to be honest. There is something here. It looks like a greater scroll. This could be good or bad. Usually they're pretty good. Minus 20 mana plus 30 health. I'm actually going to give that to Maeve, I think. Or Whisper. Give her a little extra help in terms of survival. That's a two-handed axe, which we're not going to use. We can almost get Whisper to... Actually, we can get Whisper to level 14 now, I believe, right? She's only level 13. Cool. Back to the city we go. Barracks, Whisper, Rain. Back to the tower. We're at 85% on this level. I'm going to try and finish this level in this video. We only have one battle left. Two side quests and three chests. Shouldn't be too hard. We need to level up our character first. Let's go with speed. We need to lower her mastery a little bit, but that's fine. We'll deal with that later. Uh, we will get the last meteor thing we can do. And we can get the last, well, one of the last um, bolt things we can do. Next level, we'll get the last bolt thing. We're at 8 bolts at 140 random element damage apiece. It's a lot of damage. There's a chest up there. We just go the long way around. And there's a frost pants there. What do those do? Where are they? Frost pants. Plus you might. And a bunch of other junk. That's a lot of armor, actually, and a lot of health. And decent thorns. Hmm. Cool. I don't know if they're really all that good for her, but we'll take a look in a second. Her might's already maxed out, so it doesn't really do her much good. Plus five might, and some mana regen, and some armor. Can we enchant that ring? No, so we lose 12% health, but gain four armor. I don't think it's worth it. No, don't get clipped on the thing. Just go down the stairs. Thank you. All right, that little room is done. Now we have to go all the long way around. They don't like to make this easy on us, do they? One battle, three chests, two side quests still, though. I wonder what the next level is the last level or the second last level. I think we're very close to the end, though. I think if we really put our mind to it, we can finish it today or tomorrow. I'm leaning towards today, though. I want to try and get it done. Uh, there. An old book. Days of old. Volume 9. Yep. Then, after countless days and nights, Proteus felt the surge of power. A bridge had stabilized, and the Organte were ready to cross. He stood up and approached the portal. He projected all his life force into an energy disk and thrust it into the portal. When he and the other Magi had devised the plan, 
They were hoping that the different laws of physics in the two universes would negate each other in the connection point and yet coexist at the same time. They assumed that their energy would nullify energy of the Organte, creating a void zone which nothing could cross. When he heard a mind-shattering cry of rage from the other side, he knew they were correct. The bridge was blocked and the Organte could not cross. As long as this one was opened, they could not form a different bridge elsewhere. The bridge was blocked, but not closed. His life force still depended on his body, so he knew he had to protect it somehow, hide it. So he raised the tower above the ground, then turned it around and thrust it deep into the ground to prevent anyone from ever reaching him. The portal, the bridge, still connected to him, was taken deep below ground. Deep underground, covered by layers of rock and dirt, Proteus sits on his crystal throne and keeps his eternal watch, his life force the only thing preventing destruction. Two opposing forces waiting ever since for the resolution of this struggle. Proteus can hear the Organte's whispers from the other side, pleading, begging, reasoning. He can also feel their thoughts, boundless, maddening rage but also their equally infinite patience. For the Organte know that nothing in the universe is eternal, apart from their hunger. They know that all things must come to an end, and only they will remain beyond the end of time. I see. Oh, that's the lower level descent, okay. Well, we're not quite ready for that yet. We have more things to do. There's more doors to open. We need a key to open this metal door. Where would we get such a key? Hmm. I'm going to go look around, see if I can find a key. And then either we'll go down to the next level because the key's possibly down there, or... We will... Figure something else out. Okay, I'll be back shortly. Okay, I'm back. Uh, the key is down in the next level. I had to, I looked around the entire floor, and then I had looked it up online because I was like, what the hell, there's no key anywhere here. It's down a floor. It's on level 10. Elemental Spirit 2. Oh, there's a barrier there. I can't get up there. I see. The tower avatar is here and is a battle itself. As your champions approach the entrance to a grand chamber, the sound of a heated discussion echoes throughout the halls. Bright shimmering light illuminates your champions' faces as they near cautiously. One. All too familiar voice causes Kane's grip to tighten on his blade. Have you lost all sense of reason? Your plan is sheer madness and illogical, destroying a world in order to save it? The tower avatar stands before the bright illuminated likeness of a human male. The figure is motionless for a moment, then moves with hands clasped behind his back, encircling the avatar. You've seen this animated imagery before among the Deva, yet there's something oddly familiar about, about the human's presence. Even after all these years, you still try to prevent the inevitable. Though your creators are traitors, I commend the undying perseverance they integrated into your circuits. Alas, poor Avatar, if you knew the universe as I knew it, you would know without a doubt that the hour grows too late to implement any other plan. It falls to their shoulders now and theirs alone. Proteus. Gala charges towards the holographic image of her brother. For a moment, Proteus's eyes grow large at the sight of his sister. His form seems to whisper the word no, but before any sound could be heard, the tower Avatar throws up her hand causing the vision of the Ancient to vanish. Tell me, Avatar, is he real? Does my brother somehow still draw breath within these walls? Listen to me, Engineer of Old. You, among all of them, should know Proteus' plan is nothing short of insanity that will undo the very fabric of Artara. Search your heart of hearts, and you will know this to be true. 
A strong pressure builds against your mind as you watch the Avatar speak to Kayla. The pressure continues to condense, causing the connection between your champions to waver. Someone or something is trying to disrupt your bond with your champions. Slowly, slowly drawing his blade, we do not heed the lies of traitors. While the other members of your party stand ready, expecting a discussion with their erstwhile ally, Kane rushes towards the Avatar like a man possessed. Without a pause, an intermittent aura surrounds the Avatar as her armor shifts to hues of deep red and scarlet as the Construct rushes to meet Kane's aggression. We actually get to fight the Avatar for once. She is angry. Although, to be fair, she attacked us earlier in the game if she would have won easily. Where is she? It's right there. Ah, yes, Kerrigan. You look kind of like a weird Queen of Blades. That's gonna hurt. Alright, charge in. Let's get this party started. Seventy-three percent already. Already well on our way to winning this fight. I was about to say, I think this is going to change very soon. damage this fight? Let's find out. Alright, all in all. We're gonna have to do some maths here. 84 plus 282 is 366 approximately, so 366 for Maeve. Only 135 for Kane. So, about a third of the damage of Maeve. Whisper did 92.6, which is expected that thing had high, high resistances. Oh my god, that's a nice shield. Okay, well, we'll deal with the shield in a second here, because that's pretty cool. Um, and... Um... Kayla did 200 plus 200, so 406 plus 90. Almost 500 DPS. So, I mean, ultimately, she still did the most damage by a monstrous amount. The tower avatar stumbles backwards, crashing into the wall. Though she survives, she is clearly weakened, having barely enough energy to stand upright. This is not over. With a sudden explosion of luminescence, the avatar forces your champions to avert their gaze. When the light subsides and your party once again looks in her direction, she is no more. A moment later, light returns, shimmering from behind your party. Kane is first to spin around to face it with sword drawn, but upon seeing its source, immediately lowers his blade. Ah, oh, well done, brave champions. Well done indeed. In a thousand years, none have come as far as you, and at long last, your journey is nigh complete. Brother, is it truly you? Can you possibly be alive after all these years? Proteus approaches and stands before his sister, yet instead of joy and seeing his sibling after so many years, his face softens with sadness. Dear sister, it is indeed I, Proteus. How long I have dreamt of being reunited. I had hoped under better circumstances. Proteus turns back to your party. Who are you? Are you the reason my lord has sent us to the bottom of this place? I am, and I am closer than you realize, but to finally reach me, you must shut down the tower avatar once and for all. Shut down you mean kill her? Not at all, Master Frostling. It is good to see your people so strong and full of life once again. I mean exactly what I say. The magic constru construct that is the tower avatar must be shut down, and in doing so, return her consciousness to the very moment of her creation. Only then will the final way to reach me be open. And how exactly do we go about shutting the avatar down? Three databanks, one in each separate room on this level must be disabled. Databanks? My sister understands. Kayla nods. And where are these banks of data found? A ticket? Getting access to them won't be an easy task. Insightful, Master Dwarf. The three rooms can be found here, here, and here. The corrupted magi that created the tower avatar installed defense mechanisms in these databank rooms that can only be overcome with pure life essence. Do you mean to say that one of us must sacrifice ourselves to gain access to each room? I would never presume to ask so much from the Queen of Shadows. Nevertheless, the Magi have set the price to be paid. 
I have sensed for some time hostile humans alien to Artara. As callous as it may sound, I suggest these malevolent beings be sacrificed for our cause. They came to Artara's they came for Artara's blood, now let their blood be Artara's salvation. Capturing of living souls. What you ask is beyond our capabilities. The image of Proteus presents a large, clear crystal in the palm of his hand. As he offers it to your party, it glows to a blinding white light. This crystal holds the power to capture life essence. Present it just after a foe has fallen, and it will drop their life essence without fail. It will draw their life essence without fail. To release the life essence sword, you need to only expose the crystal, and it will do so. Proteus's suggestion of using living beings to disable the tower avatar causes shock and hesitation among your party. As Caden and the others look to themselves, considering how to respond, the visual representation of Proteus flickers. The Ancient touches his head as if under great strain. I must go now. I know you have many more questions, especially you, sister. I will try to answer them all when at last we meet. I have no doubt we will all meet in person soon. After all, the very fate of the world is at stake. Proteus slowly fades, vanishing before any of your champions can question him further. And the barrier is gone, we can go up and get our gold. But we still can't upgrade Whisper yet. Soon though, very soon. What does this level have in store for us? Tons of chests. 26 chests, 1 secret room, 16 battles, 5 enchantment scrolls, which we already got one of them. 1 side quest, 1 main quest. Who in our group hates us, by the way? There's gotta be some people that really aren't aligned with us very well. Eric and Rakim, Boron and Kayla are neutral. Whisper really likes us a lot. That's why our skill power is so much higher. I really want Maeve and Kane, though. I don't really care too much about movement speed, to be honest. The laboratory. There's a giant axe there. 200 X Level 5 does avoid damage. A crafting forge. Does anything we have need to be upgraded? Maybe. Nothing on him. One item on her can be the boots. We could upgrade a sword, but I can't- Oh yeah, I might be able to get mana leech then. It does more damage. Maybe the sword? Okay, what else? I guess we can go back up to all the other floors where we haven't upgraded things and do the upgrades for them. Actually, nice hat. I'm gonna try the sword though, I think. Now we can be enchanted. It also is more powerful and has plus three, or plus five speed, I should say. Our damage is gonna go up quite a lot. We can item forge it. What did we do last time? Oh yeah, we did sheer damage. I think we'll do again this time. And we should enchant it too. One-handed sword, enchantments, melee weapon. So, we want mana drain, probably. Yeah. Yep. 5% mana drain. That'll do. That should help his damage a little bit. We are now in the conservatory. We haven't finished the last level, but we can't because we don't have the key yet. Which irks me a little bit. A lot of damage on that bow. 27 DPS. What was that armor, too? Oh, yeah, we have played of the last stand. His armor is plus three might, plus two life. That movement speed decrease, those would suck. 8.2, that'd be 5.2. A huge armor increase, though, and some void resistance and some more hit points. A really heavy hit to health regeneration, though. I think I'll ponder that one a little bit more. Really need to go through all this junk and just enchant some of it. But that's okay, we'll do that later. Then we'll do some bigger enchantments, because we've gotten some upgraded enchantments since last time we did our big enchant. Humans, let's do this, humans.
Oh, they're portal humans. Perfect. Love portal humans. One portal down. We'll let them handle that. We're gonna move off to the other portal. Portal's almost dead. Portal 2 down. Gonna shot this one guy. And moving in, getting ready for portal number 3. Okay Titan, you gotta move. Right there. Against big groups, though, Kane still does the most damage, I think. Although, nope, Whisper. Whisper did the most. That was pretty impressive. Skill increase plus 22%. That could be really good if we upgrade that. One handed wand? Plus five speed, that's also pretty nice. Alright, well, we've killed some humans. If violence is required to save Artara, so be it. I will be the first to draw blood without reservation, but there is something about harvesting the life essence of these intruders that doesn't sit right with me. I agree, man of the North. How the Magi could have ever required such a payment to alter one of their constructs, it just seems to go against everything they stood for. Don't forget, Kayla, they were rebels. The true Magi who cared about Artara and their inhabitants sacrificed themselves, giving their own life essence to Proteus. The Avatar must be neutralized. If the cost is in life essences, what choice do we have? It still seems strange to go to such lengths to kill the Avatar. I remember just a short while she helped us through the tower. Do not forget, Master Smith, our intention is not to destroy her, but merely to turn her consciousness to that of the day she was created. I wonder why this is required to seek an audience with my brother. I have a strange feeling about all this. Something just isn't adding up. Perhaps it's the guilt of harvesting fellow humans that clouds your perception. As far as the Queen of Shadows is concerned, creatures of free will, for good or bad, reap what they sow. I'm actually kind of with the shadow person for now. Whirlwind level 3 and a teleporter, which is kind of pointless. How are we doing for time? We're almost- actually we're out of time. We're gonna get this chest. And we're gonna get this next chest, I think. And then we'll call it a video. And also we'll level up Whisper. It's time. Level 15. Cool. Now, where are we at in terms... Oh, we don't need to go there. We can do it from here. In terms of her stuff, Elemental Barrage needs the last bolt. And that's pretty much all of her stat points. Okay, she's got tons of mastery. We actually need to redo some of that mastery stuff. So we're going to get some speed. Her life total is actually pretty decent for now. We'll reset and redo her stuff later on. I'm gonna go through our inventory and do some challenges between videos, I think, so that we can get those all out of the way. We have many advanced orcs to kill, or a bunch of gold. We'll start to level up our other characters too, like Eric, for example. Probably could use a little bit of leveling. For now, though, I'll leave you guys here. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. I'll just see you next time. Take care.